Welcome back. Earlier today, Yahoo Finance reports non-farm payrolls increased more than expected. 353,000 new jobs created in January. Last month's 216 report was revised much higher today, the 333. Unemployment rate remains unchanged. We're going to see exactly how much of an effect this report uh, has on our prospects of a Fed cut. We see here non-farm payrolls. Uh, we were trending to the downside, but today's report certainly is a change of pace, 353,000. And if you recall, last month's report was an abysmal 216, but I guess I took a look, another look at the numbers, and now that's 333. So we've broken a downtrend in the non-farm payrolls report. But if we look behind the details, Consider non-farm payrolls on a year-over-year -year basis. I think it's a much more fair way to look at the numbers because December is a much different month than June. You know, there's seasonal factors with everything. And last month's report, we can see the prior candle. That is much up much more than it was a year prior. But this month's non-farm payrolls is actually down 27% from a year ago, from January of 2023. So while the number looks great, perhaps there's a lot of hiring in January and we would expect a good number. This number is not as good as it was last year. And we can see last month's revision, that certainly was revised uh, to the upside compared to last, uh, last year this time. We see the unemployment rate also 3.7% unchanged. That's good. There's a lot that we're expecting a rise. But if you look at the unemployment rate on a year-over-year -year basis, it's actually up almost 9% from this time last year. So the unemployment rate is rising as the same way that the non-farm payrolls was actually a disappointment if we look at this on a seasonal basis. Average hourly earnings year-over-year -year, up 4.5%. That's good. Labor force participation rates 625 but if you look at on a year-over-year -year basis, it's actually a decline. Not very much of a decline, but certainly uh, we want to look at the trends. Non-farm payrolls, we have three different subcategories. The green represents the private sector. Blue are the goods. Red are services. In particular, we want to make note of the services as it's the dr service-driven economy. And again, on a year-over-year -year base, uh, base, it's all declining. 12% down, private sector. Uh, goods is down 39%, 25% to the downside, also in services. So overall, you know, look, the number is good. We want to we want to see improvement to be sure. But just, you know, keep in consideration, if we look at this on a seasonal basis, it's not as strong as it was last year. So it's not a great number, but certainly it's a good number. Well, with that in mind, we always want to take into consideration what is the Federal Reserve going to think about this? Because ultimately, it's the Federal Reserve that drives the Fed funds futures and it drives the expectation of higher, lower interest rates. So we're starting something new. Uh, let us know what you think about this if you think it's kind of helpful. But what we're going to do between today's meeting or this week's meeting and last uh, next month's meeting or actually the end of March. We're going to track every single economic number, every big economic number, I should say. We're going to watch the Fed funds futures on the right-hand side and also, of course, the S&P 500. And what we're going to do is make note, very simply, was a number good or bad? And then the Fed funds futures reaction. So we see, for example, construction spending, that was a good number. That's why it's in green. And we had a 38.5% chance that the Federal Reserve would cut rates in the next meeting in March. S&P 500 closed yesterday, 49.06. Well, today's non-farm payroll number and the M3 factory orders, by the way, they were both considered to be good numbers. Well, we color those greens. And as a result, we see here the Fed funds futures have now dropped down to 20.5% with a strong close in the S&P 500 at 49.59. In other words, the good numbers today have reduced the chances that the Federal Reserve will cut rates in the March meeting. 
How can we use this information? Why is it important? Well, we look to the stock markets and we, you know, the stock market, obviously it wants to see good news. Today was good news. And that's probably some of the reason why a lot of stocks are up. But also the stock market is sensitive to the prospects of higher interest rates for a longer period of time. Well, so far it appears, and we're also in the middle of earnings season as well, so that you know that certainly can move stocks. But the fact of the matter is, it appears the theme that the stock market right now is watching is strong growth. And today's numbers give the Fed credence. It really does back up the Fed's decision to step away from the prospect of uh, higher interest rates, or at least not cutting interest rates anytime soon. So in the past two days, we had three big numbers, the factory orders, non-farm payroll today, and yesterday, construction spending. All three are good. Fed fund futures have dropped. Stocks are, you know, they really like this. We're up over the past two days, over 100 points in the S&P 500. Certainly, that's good. We're going to continue to watch these numbers. We're going to add to this calendar as we go along, and I think it's going to give us a very good basis uh, to know what the Federal Reserve is going to do, and maybe we can use this also to anticipate stock market trends as well. Let us know what you think if you think this is worthwhile. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.